All right, so we're going to continue our discussion of critical points for functions of two variables with a couple of examples where we find and classify the critical points. Um, so we'll start with this example here. So here's our function of two variables. Uh, we've got a degree four polynomial function, right? We've got the x to the four, y to the four. Um, we've also got this uh, product term in here with the x times y, which is probably going to complicate our algebra a little bit. So let's get started and, and see how things turn out. Um, so, first we want to find the critical points, and we know that step one in that is finding the gradient and setting it equal to zero. So let's start by finding that gradient. So we have an x derivative given by 4x cubed minus 4y. And then we have a y derivative given by 4y cubed minus 4x. All right. And of course, we need both of these to be equal to 0. So we need, we need this to be equal to 0. And of course, if that's equal to zero, that's the same thing as saying that y should be equal to x cubed. And if we set this one equal to zero, well, that means that x should be the same thing as y cubed. So how do you solve these two equations simultaneously? Um, right? Because they're not linear equations, we don't have any kind of nice standard strategy to apply like we do you know, in a, in a course like Math 1410 in a linear algebra course. Um, so you get to the answer by whatever means sort of gets the job done for you, right? And in this case, what you're going to want to do is, well, let's see. Um, I guess over here, we know that x is equal to y cubed, or we know that y is equal to x cubed. We can do a substitution. Why don't we take, take y equals x cubed and plug that in for x over there? If we do that... then what we're going to get is that x is equal to x cubed cubed. We'll come back to this one. I'm going to use this space over here so we don't run out of room. We'll do this in another video. Um, so this, if I, if I rearrange things, so x cubed cubed is x to the 9. Let's bring the, the x over to the other side. x to the 9 minus x should be zero. Okay, so factor out an x. We have x times x to the 8 minus 1. That should be equal to zero. Uh, well, this factors, right? This factors as x to the 4 minus 1 times x to the 4 plus 1. I mean, probably you already know the answer is it's going to be plus or minus 1, but, you know, whatever. Let's finish it. Um, x, x squared, let me, let me skip a step. Okay. All right, so that's a lot of work to get to the result, which is what? X can be either 0, 1, or minus 1. And now we can come back over to the equations we start with. So we know that y should be x cubed, right? y has to be equal to x cubed. We have three possible values for x. Um, and we know that in this case here, if x is 0, 0 cubed gives me that uh, uh, y should be equal to 0. If x is equal to 1, 1 cubed gives me y equals 1. If x equals minus 1, minus 1 cubed y equals minus 1, okay? So there are three critical points. We have 0, 0, 1, 1, minus 1, minus 1, okay? So those are our three critical points. Um, we could go about finding critical values, but one of the things that, you know, 
Um, and we'll, we'll do another example illustrating this. Um, so students will sometimes make the mis this mistake of, of assuming that, you know, if you take these critical points, you plug them into your function, if you get a value that's bigger than what you get at other points, that must be a maximum. But this isn't necessarily guaranteed, okay? The only way to be sure that you've got, let's say, a local maximum rather than a saddle point or, or a local minimum is, is to move to the second derivative test, right? And so to do the second derivative test, of course, you, well, you need the second derivatives. So let's work out what, what those are. So if we take the x derivative of the x derivative, we get simply 12x squared. Our cross term, you'll notice, is going to be minus 4, right? Whether you take the y derivative here or the x derivative here, you get minus 4, equality of mixed partials, as you would expect. And the y derivative is going to be 12y squared. Okay? So now we apply the second derivative test. So we've got to calculate those a, b, c, d values, right? And we do them one point at a time. So. at the point zero, zero, what do we have? Well, A, so remember A is what you get from the x derivative, the second derivative with respect to x. So if we put x, y equals zero in there, we see that A equals zero. B is the mixed derivative, minus four. C is the y derivative, zero. D, Remember that D is, it's always given by this formula, A times C minus B squared. Um, by the way, if this looks like a determinant to you, it is. Um, this is one way that you might remember it. Um, let me throw this up here. So D is the determinant of this symmetric matrix that looks like this. Um, and uh, if you bothered to look up the details, you might find out why, where this matrix actually shows up um, and why it's significant and, and why it, it kind of leads to the second derivative test. So the, the derivative does actually play a role, um, but, or the, sorry, the determinant. So D is what? Um, minus 4 squared is 16, 0 minus 16, minus 16 is negative. So we have a saddle point, right? <coughs> what about at, uh, at 1, 1? So if x is equal to 1, y is equal to 1. We have that A, if I put X equals 1 in here, A is 12, B is still minus 4, C is 12, D, A times C, 144 minus 16. Um, we don't even need to bother with the subtraction. All we need to realize is that is definitely positive. So D is positive, A is positive, so this is going to be a local minimum, okay? So we have a local min. All right, very good. And um, what about the last point at minus one, mi minus one? Well, it's going to be exactly the same, right? Because, because these are quadratic, if I square minus 1, I still get plus 1. Um, so at minus 1, minus 1 is going to be exactly the same as what we had at, at 1, 1. Um, so also a local min. Okay. Um, which I think is, is a little bit interesting. Notice that we, you have two local minima, but there's, there's no local maximum. There is a saddle point, however. Um, right? So 
In Calc 1, you don't really see that, right? In Calc 1, you usually have some intuition that if you, if you have uh, two local minimum values, then somewhere in between those two local minima, there must be a local maximum, um, right? In Calc 1, that sort of ends up being forced, but uh, in, uh, in Calc 4, once you've got more than one variable, you've got a little bit more freedom on how things fit together, and, uh, and things like this can happen. We'll do another example after this, uh, after this second one. We'll do one more example where we, uh, where we illustrate this point once again. Um, so we'll stop here for this example. Um, we'll clean the board. We'll come back for example number two.